everyone, welcome back for another episode for video tutorial. For this video, we will focus our study on the use of ChartJS for your applications. Now before we can use ChartJS for your applications, allow me to create a data service for this. Now um, what we are going to do is we are going to reuse our existing example on line number one. So in order to do so, let's go ahead and create new data model together. So right click on model here, select new file, and I'm going to put uh, cell order as the name of this model, and then this will be under namespace online one dot model subfolder. And now let's create the class together here. So the name of the class is um, cell orders. And we are going to put three different informations. One is for the primary key, that is the sales ID get set. You also need to have um, the zone number so let's call zone get set and public um, sale amount so I'm going to use double for this sales amount get set alright okay get <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and it's going to be okay. All right. So that is the um, the structure of this business entity. And for EF, we also have to do um, data annotation here. So let's put key for the first information so that this become the primary key for this. Now once we have a um, business entity for this, the second step is to go to our um, DB context here and include another DB set. So this time we are going to use cell orders as data type and the name of the new tables that will be used for the physical database is cell orders. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and since I have one of these over here, I'm going to remove everything right here and then we do from scratch. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to terminal here and then issue command .NET EF migrations. And since we do not have a migration folder anymore, I just deleted it. So we are going to go from scratch, so call first migration with s okay and um, this command is going to generate another migration file with uh, the folder migrations and since we already contain this entity here okay so the next step is we are going to say ef um, database and then actually update this migrations to the physical DB so this will be applies to the new database called online one based on our connection string and also we're gonna get uh, three different table as well so one of them is products sale order and supply supplier now for sale order let's go ahead and insert couple data mockup here I'm gonna have zone one um, sale amount 1000 so in one again as well, sale amount for um, 2000. So let's do this for a um, couple more. So we're going to have zone one again for 300. And now move to zone number two for 1000. And do a couple more. So we're going to have zone two as well for 300. And the last one, which is for number three for. Um, 400 okay so we're gonna get six different data record right here now my intention is I would like to uh, generate the data okay that give me um, the knowledge of um, how many zone we have and for each zone how many cells ID we have as well so that's my goal so in order to make this happen so we're gonna need to go to our existing projects and create the new controller. I'm going to call the new controller as the 
let me delete this I'm going to call it as um, chart controller so in here this controller will be under online number one under folder controller here and we're gonna have the class chart controller and this class also inherited from controller without s now we're gonna need to import this at the beginning here so that it understand who is controller class we also need to add constructors now the constructors would be public as the name of the class which is chart controller and the duty for this constructor is whenever this object is created it should um, inject one of our um, services which is our db context so it's going to be my db context here and the input is context so we're gonna have a local reference call underscore context equal to the input that take it in here okay so I'm going to import this first and then the second step is to generate this variable right here you can manually add this if you like now this variable will be able to be accesses from any function inside this class okay now the next step is we are going to first let's make the comments for this the end and this is the end of constructor mlcon I will create an action to return a data query so I'm going to call it as the um, let's call it data and this function return I action result now what we need to do is just to generate the query query that return okay the structure that look like this so it should return a set of objects okay the set of objects that uh, have the structure of the so number like this and count for how many of them let's say we know there's going to be three and so on okay this is our intentions so in order to make this happen we're going to need to um, access to the um, DB context here and we know that that could be done through the use of underscore context so we're going to say hey result will be equal to underscore context we access to our table which is um, cell orders all right and then the next step is we're going to say that we are going to group this by so number so we are going to say group by but uh, when you call group by this is not part of the standard uh, query it is using linq so we're going to need to import linq as well so the linq after the import you should call should be able to call group by like this now inside the group by we are going to generate the new structure so it's going to be a new um, structure okay new objects inside this object i'm going to call group and this group is coming with the data of the zone okay i have the reference for you as well here so just in case that you want to follow here okay so it's going to be not equal um call equal like this now after you say oh, i would like to group the query from this based on the group okay uh, group of what group of the zone and the new structure is going to give me the column group with the so number all right now we are going to make the selection from here so it's going to be select now inside this select is the function call so inside this function call we are going to pass the arrow functions we know that uh, after the first group command here we got a group a set of groups okay so we're gonna say hey group we want to look at yourself and could you please create the new objects as the result so this object structure will contain the so number that is getting from the group itself of the key and the group 
okay so this one is going to take this zone ID from here the second piece of information is we're gonna get how many zone okay how many zone is there for let's say flow number one the reason for this is because based on our data this command will give us uh, three different object like this it's going to give us group of Uh, so number one, okay, like this. So it's going to give something like this as the output. So let me copy this so that you can see, you can visualize the output more easier because this might be your first time looking at uh, link U syntax. So it's going to give us something like this as the output. Okay, so that's going to be the set of three different objects. With this, we got group one, group two, and group three based on the zone number. We have three different zone number for now. And then by calling select here, we say, hey, each time you pick up the object for us, we call them group. I want to create the new structures that contain the zone. So that why we can have access to this number here based on this calling, okay? And then the second things that we need is how many how many zones are there? I'm oh, sorry, how many cells are there, are there for zone number one? So we can make a count. So we can make this information name as count and could be from group dot count. And this is the function call. All right. So after this is done, you can also um, reorder this output. Okay. So the output of this is going to be something like this. So it's going to give us a thing that look like this. It's going to be zone like one for count equal to three. Uh, zone two will be equal to count equal to two and so on. Okay, so that's going to be the output from this statement. Just in case that is not rearranged, based on anything else, you can just keep it like that. But uh, most of the time, I like to source this data as well by number of the count. So keep in mind that uh, after this done, we got a set of objects like this. We can order those objects based on the count information and we use alloc function for doing this so it's going to be ordered by this information and then the, the last step that we need to perform is to turn it into the list okay now once this is done we can see what would be the output first so we say return JSON of this result all right, now let's run this application together. Now you can have access to this action call from controller name chart, controller under the name of the function's data. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to access to chart and data. And it's going to give me the output. As you can see, this is actually resemble the same prediction that I have over here so we're going to have so number the how many of the cells are there so number two how many cell order and so on all right so this is the first episode for this video tutorial for chart.js I'll see you for the next one thank you